Amanda. Thanks for joining me this Wednesday on 7 Edition. I'm Sabrina Zaino and these are tonight's top stories. Dun uh, Mahadir confident of two-thirds majority on bill to lower voting age. Blacklisted PTPTN borrowers may stand a chance to buy their first homes. And two pregnant women among dozens dead in Papua New Guinea tribal massacre. The government will include automatic registration and eligibility for 18-year-olds to become candidates in general elections. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad today said that such amendments would be included in the Constitution of Amendment Bill to be tabled in the current parliament sitting. Earlier today, the government withdrew the bill to lower the age of voting to 18. Commitment dalam pertemuan kita pagi tadi uh, pembakan semua memberi uh, pengakuan bahawa mereka akan sokong pindaan ini setelah, setelah ditambah automatic registration dan hak untuk uh, menjadi calon. Tuan yakin akan mendapat 2 per 3 sokongan? yakin akan mendapat 2 per 3 sokongan? Kita yakin. Kita <laughs> Takkanlah dia orang nak tipu saya. <laughs> the bill uh, requires two-thirds majority vote of the 222 seats in the Dewan Rakyat to amend the constitution. Last week, the opposition said the lowering of voting age to 18 must be coupled with automatic registration while also favoring the eligibility age of election candidates to be lowered to 18. Meanwhile, the opposition bloc, in thanking the government, said it will support the bill. Bagi mewakili blok pembangkang, ingin mengucapkan sedikit-sedikit terima kasih kepada Yang Mak Berhormat Tun dan juga pihak kerajaan kerana bersetuju menerima cadangan balas daripada pihak pembangkang iaitu So to get more insights on this issue on the line with us is the director of Malacca Center, Ibrahim Sufyan. Hello there, Ibrahim. Thanks for joining us this evening. Hi. Hi. So uh, first question is, if the voting age is lowered to 18, how are we sure that these 18-year-olds will actually vote? And are they interested? How will we get them to participate? Well, um, I think first of all, we need to look at the culture of democracy and elections here in our country. Uh, if we judge uh, how the future will be from the history of how things have unfolded, we do notice that voter turnout in the country is very, very high, uh, sometimes in excess of 80%. And when we look at you know, how younger people, the 21-year-olds, have turned out in previous general elections, the turnouts have been fairly high as well, you know, all in excess of 80 to 82% you know, uh, nationwide on average. So I think if the voting age is lowered to 18 years old, coupled with the very vibrant uh, electoral process and very lively uh, political debate that we have in our country, I think there is no reason why uh, voter participation amongst younger people is going to be any less than the rest of the population. Uh, in, and this is principally because we have a strong culture for political participation, we have a very strong uh, public debate on issues of policy and polemics in social media uh, where I think young people can uh, participate. And finally, I think for the participants in the uh, political process, the political parties themselves, will see young people as a new market, as a new group of people that they can persuade to support them in the campaign hustings.
How will this change impact? Uh, how will this change impact the electoral candidates? And what about campaigning style and policies uh, with this new dynamic? We have a very strong political culture in Malaysia, in the sense that as many as 25 to 30 percent of voters in the country are actually members of political parties. Now we know that uh, in the past, uh, most members of political parties are older people, in the sense that they are in excess of 30 years old or at least, you know, in the late 20s, entered political parties for whatever reason. Uh, so I think with younger people, the level of political loyalty is going to be a lot lower than the older generation. So you're going to have campaign styles that will have to focus on issues that these voters care about, and that will be practical matters such as jobs, um, you know, financial support for education, for starting new businesses, for getting new families to get by in tough economic times, things like that. Uh, but mm -hmm. notwithstanding that, we also notice that in politics in Malaysia, issues that relate to identity, race and religion, as well as regionalism, is also going to play very strongly. And in terms of the medium for which these issues are going to be debated and persuasion is going to be carried out, I think increasingly is going to be social media and new forms of interpersonal communication. Uh, it will be less dependent on uh, the mass political rallies or charama that we are used to seeing in the past. Okay, just really, really uh, briefly for me, what are the possible issues or problems that may, uh, we may face in you know, implementing the automatic voting? Just really briefly. Yeah, there are two issues here. Number one is that this is something really new. So it will be dependent on the strength of the institutions that will implement this because automatic registration means the data at the Department of National Registration has to be solid, it has to be uh, accurate so that uh, really uh, people who are alive that are voting, not dead voters and so on, we have that issue. The other issue is more fundamental and systemic. We have a very serious uh, disparity in the sizes of constituency. Largest and smallest constituency, the gap is very big. Uh, by going into automatic registration is going to actually exacerbate, going to deepen the differences between the sizes of constituencies. We have very small constituencies and very large constituencies. That problem that's called malapportionment, that's going to persist. Okay, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Ibrahim. Thank you. Now on to the Pera Exco a rape allegation. Police have recorded statements from several witnesses, including family members of the Exco member Paul Yong, who was alleged to have sexually assaulted his Indonesian maid. According to Pera Police Chief Dato Razaruddin Hussein, police have also conducted forensics probe at the alleged scene of the incident, and several items have been taken as proof to be analyzed. Earlier, Dato Razaruddin said Yong was released on police bail after his statement was recorded. The Exco member was arrested after his 23-year-old Indonesian maid lodged a report claiming she was raped at her employer's home in Meru, Pera. The woman had been taken to a safe location until the investigation papers were referred to the federal police and the deputy public prosecutor. Now, the case is being probed under the penal code for rape. Meanwhile, the Pera Exco has maintained his innocence. The Housing, Local Government, Public Transport, Non-Islamic Affairs and a New Villages Committee chairman said he had never raped or sexually assaulted her and believed that justice and truth would prevail. In a statement, Young unequivocally and categorically denied the unfounded allegations, saying he was totally shocked and baffled by it. Now, the Exco member also said he had given full cooperation to the police and brought witnesses to assist in the investigations to show that the allegation is false. And coming up, more news after the break. We are back with some good news. Malaysians with Outstanding National Higher Education Fund Corporation, or PTPTN, will be able to purchase their first home. This follows a move to exempt them from being blacklisted in the Central Credit Information System, or CCRIS. But with regards to PTPN, we already uh, got the green light from the uh, Minister of Education through the PTPN chairman that we're going to uh, make exemption for PTPN Chris, uh, Chris, 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 uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris,
Zoraida added that the Seacrest arrangement is only for buying houses and not anything else, including cars. The new rule will be included in the youth housing scheme, which is expected to be launched this October. She also said the perceived abandoned Prima Homes project in Rantau Negri Sembilan will be completed by its deadline of May 2020. Works on the project, which has stalled after contractors claimed they were not getting paid, could start soon as payments to contractors were being made. Now, after a press conference today, journalists sang happy birthday to Tun Dr. Mahadir, who turns 94 years old. And according to him, his birthday wish this year is simple. On his social media accounts, he marked his birthday with a wish to see through measures he has initiated to steer Malaysia back onto the path of recovery. Birthday wishes poured in for Tun Dr. Mahadir, and he thanked everyone who conveyed them. At 94, the Prime Minister is enjoying another peak in his political career. And as we all know, Tunok Mahadir, or the Comeback Kid, recorded world history on May 9th last year, being the oldest Malaysian Prime Minister at 92 and the first Malaysian Prime Minister to be elected twice in his lifetime. On to foreign news. At least 24 people, including two pregnant women and their unborn children, were killed in a three-day spasm of tribal violence in Papua New Guinea. Officials said the deaths occurred in the Hela province when rival tribes apparently clashed over control of local gold deposits in the mineral-rich soil. The latest violence, uh, violent acts have prompted its Prime Minister, James Marape, to promise swift justice on Wednesday. To find out more on the brutal tragedy, let's cross over to our trainee reporter, Noor Fatima Zahra Ahmad, for more on the story. Thank you, Sabrina. According to eyewitnesses and local media, six people returning from ceremony were ambushed and killed on July 6. The next day, gunmen entered Karida village in central Hela province and killed 18 people as well as two unborn children, shooting and hacking them to death. Police are still investigating on who are involved in these violent incidents. The incident has shocked both the country and recently appointed Prime Minister, whose constituency includes the district where the killings occurred. Hela Provincial Administrator William Bando informed that the death toll could rise on Wednesday. A local health worker said it was hard to recognize some of the body parts and posted images of the remains bundled together with mosquito nets used as temporary body bags. Tribal clashes are a frequent occurrence in Papua New Guinea's highlands where old riv rivalries prompted by rape, theft or disputes over tribal boundaries and resources. But this is the most serious incident in years. That's all I have for now. Now, back to you Sabrina in the studio. Thank you so much, Fatima, for those updates. Now moving on, the sister to the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, faces a verdict Tuesday in a French trial pertaining to allegedly beating a workman who was refurbishing her ultra-luxury apartment in Paris. Hassa binti Salman stands accused of ordering her bodyguard to beat up the workman after he was seen taking a photo inside her home in September 2016. The princess, who denies the allegations and is not expected to be present, allegedly suspects suspected the man of planning, of planning to sell the photo of her apartment. The workman said he was tied up and ordered to kiss the feet of the princess. He claimed he was then beaten up and had his tools confiscated during an ordeal that lasted several hours. <laughs> Now it's time for clickbait where we take a look at what's trending and making the rounds in the cyber world today. And we all know that sadly money doesn't grow on trees. So this student from UITM Junka shared her own tips and tricks on the moolah where she saved up about 600 ringgit in just three months. The money saving tweet went viral and netizens were quick to swoop in to share their tips too.
Izzati Farhana tweeted her secret in saving money, the green notes method, which is saving every five ringgit note she has in her money box. She expressed that it's her first time using such a method to save money thanks to a tip by her roommate, and emphasized that despite how easy the method sounds, strict discipline still must be put in place for the trick to work, or else the money will be long gone anyway. Twitter users who came across the tweet shared that they have been using the same method and how it too works wonders for them. Meanwhile, other netizens used other colored notes methods as their piggy banking tip. When we return, BMW rolls out a new electric car. We'll be right back. Welcome back on to business. 60 years after the first Mini rolled off the production line in Oxford, BMW has unveiled a new electric version targeting urban buyers. According to the Munich-based car maker, the, the electric Mini hopes to herald a new era and help the brand meet the European Union carbon dioxide emissions limits. Well, I think electric's really important for us as a brand. It's really going to be a, a, a staple part of our future. But equally, we know that customers will still want to retain uh, elements of combustion engines. So actually, for Mini, we'll have all, all three available. We've obviously got petrol and diesel product. We've also got a plug-in hybrid model, the Countryman, which is proving really successful. And of course, now with full electric, we'll have a full suite of offers. The investment in the new Mini will preserve jobs of about 5,000 workers at the Oxford plant at an uncertain time for an industry awaiting Brexit clarity. The plant produced 234,501 Mini and Mini Clubman cars in 2018, an increase of 4.8% year on year. Now, the Prime Minister today gave two conditions for parties interested to take over national carrier Malaysia Airlines. One is to preserve Malaysia Airlines' national identity, and the other is to ensure the recovery plan does not involve job losses for its employees. This comes after his announcement in March that the government was considering whether to shut, sell or refinance the struggling national carrier. The airline has been trying to transform its operations and return to profitability by 2019 as it continues to recover from two disasters. On Monday, the Prime Minister said the government had received four takeover offers for Malaysia Airlines, the majority of which are from locals. However, he said no decision has been made as the government is still studying the offers. Now, a FBM KLCI lost 3.9 points to close to close lower today at 1,678 points amid overnight mixed performance in the U.S. market. The benchmark index was bogged down by selling interest in heavyweight counter led by Petronas Chemical Berhad. On two stocks to watch, Red Alert, Kuala Lumpur, Kapong Berhad's core net profit may fall as much as 8%, 8.5%. The company is expected to rake in lower sales based on an average CPO price of 2,000 ringgit per ton. Definitely a sell. Moving on, uh, EITA Resources Berhad may see its profit margin for MRT2 and LRT3 lift infra project slashed by half. But its earnings could receive a boost from the installation of substation jobs from next year onwards. Attractive stock, definitely a buy. And last but not least, IJM Corpor Corporation Berhad's contract for the underground package of LRT3 has been terminated. The termination is expected to reduce the company's outstanding order book by 1.1 billion ringgit. Time to sell the stock.